You would think that what with all the software available to us to process our images, that being On One Photo Raw, Capture One, DxO, Luminar, and on and on, that we'd have all we need to get great processing achieved. But such is really not the case. Now, I always go through Photoshop to finish an image, especially if I have dynamic range balancing to do, and to resize and sharpen for final output. Now first, I've been using Photoshop for some 15 years, all the way back to version 5.5, so I'm very comfortable using Photoshop. Secondly, Photoshop excels at layers, and since I'm going to be doing some dynamic range balancing, and I am really familiar with Photoshop, I get things done really quickly, and so this is where I finish the image. You may have a desire to go to Lightroom or whatever it is, but Whatever your finishing program is, do all the possible global corrections before you get to this point, which is what I've done here. Everything is in the Pro Photo color space. Uh, we've done all the adjustments to it on a global basis that we can. And what I'm going to do is take this image and balance it with this image, combine them for a uh, balanced dynamic range. So let's go ahead and choose these two images. I'm going to right click in Adobe Bridge, come down to Open With, and then go to Adobe Photoshop. And these are loaded into the workspace. I'm gonna go ahead and take that one out. I'm not gonna save the changes. So we have this image over here, the dark one, and then the light one right here. And there's a couple of ways to do this, but this is just what I do. So I left click, hold it down, pull it down off the dock, and it's a floating image. And then I get the move tool, take the move tool, put the cursor inside the floating image, hold down the shift key, left click, pull it over, let it drop, and it goes automatically into a layer stack, as we can see right here. Now, I want really to start with a darker image, so what I'm gonna do is click on Background and then hit Command-J or Control-J on a Windows machine, and then I'm gonna left-click and hold it down and then drag the top layer below the middle layer. That way, I'm starting really where I wanna start. So then we come down and get a mask, Get the brush. The brush color is black, so we're going to be revealing. And I'm going to set the opacity, or rather the flow, at about, oh, let's call it 5%. I want this to be a really gradual blend. So let's go ahead and start. And I'm going to come across the bottom, and you can see how that's coming into view. And you don't have to swipe every time, you can just Put the cursor over an area and click on it and see if it doesn't work a little better. Now I know that's looking kind of flat. I'm gonna correct that here in just a minute, but I do wanna get the exposure matched before we start doing any fine tuning. And I'm gonna go ahead and just click on these trees a little more to bring them out. Okay, now I'm going to click on the middle layer. And I'm going to come up to Filter, Camera Raw Filter. And we're going to go for the Clarity Slider. And I'm going to go ahead and just run this up to about right there. Let's go ahead and click on it and see how that changes our image. It should give us a little more detail and drama in those darker areas right here, which it has done. So I'm real pleased with that result. And I'm kind of just glancing around here to see what there is to see. Maybe I want to do something else. I think maybe this area here is a little too bright, so I'm going to bring that down. I'm going to change. Go get the mask. I'm going to change the color to white, and then I'm going to kind of blend this back in right here in the middle. Just go ahead and darken that somewhat, just like that. I think that works a little better. There, that's balanced. Now what else do we want to do? Well, let's work on these clouds a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to see this little area right here. I'm going to left click on it and I'm going to flatten the image because I like what we've got so far. And then I'm going to establish two more copy layers, pick the middle layer, and I'm going to cancel the visibility of the top layer so that now we're looking only at the middle layer. And I'm going to add just a little bit of the clarity slider to the clouds just to see what happens. I may not like it, but we're going to test. 
We're going to see. I kind of like that. Just a little bit. You don't have to go crazy. I mean, if you were to stick it all the way over there, I mean, that's obviously something that's processed. So I don't want the viewer to be impressed with that uh, reaction that it was processed. I just want the, there you go, a little bit of the dramatic edge to come out of there. Next thing I'm going to do is do a little dodge and burn. And we've got the shadows we're going to accentuate. Our exposure is 9%, which is kind of aggressive. You can see the instant change there. I want to darken these areas of the clouds just to give ourselves a little more dramatic punch. Go ahead and punch it a little bit down here. I want to get things balanced. I want to draw the viewer's attention right here in the middle so I don't need a lot of bright, garish tones over here on the edges because that's going to steer the vision away from these areas of the image that I want the viewer to focus on. There you go. That's a little better. Let's go ahead and activate the top layer and I'm going to put up another mask. Go get my brush. And this time I want the opacity to be 100% because I know I want everything that's under this layer. So let's go ahead, oh, let's put that back to black. We're going to come over here and just paint across to reveal 100% of the clouds because I like the result. And you can see right here that the mask is completely erased. There are no areas that I need to go back over. So we've achieved that. Let's see, let's, yeah, I also want to 100% on that, and this area here, because it did darken it. It's just that we've already put the clarity slider on the foliage here, the green part, and I don't want to do it again, so I'm, I'm going to use masking to achieve that result. So far, so good. Okay, I like what we see so far. Again, we're going to come up here and we're going to click on this little area right up here and come down, flatten the image. And now I'm only going to do one copy layer, Command or Control J, Filter, or rather Image, Adjustments, Black and White. And now we've got us a black and white image. Notice this image does not have a lot of color. Okay, so I'm just going to change this into a black and white image. I think it'll be uh, more emotionally impactful that way. So I'm going to go to Image, Adjustments. I'm going to get the black and white palette. And when you want to adjust the greens, you have to move the yellow slider. Green leaves, green foliage, lawns, that kind of thing. You always adjust the yellow slider. Look what happens. See how those trees come up? All right, so we're going to come to yellows. We're going to boost these yellows to bring out the fact that there's some trees in there. See, and the greens don't do very much at all. They do some, but not a whole lot. So I can leave that where it is. The blues help our clouds somewhat. There's no magenta in this image. It might be a little cyan, so we're going to pull that over. And I'm liking that a lot. So let's go ahead and say we like that. Now I'm going to come up here. I'm going to flatten the image again. And another copy layer. Dodge and burn. This time I'm going to get the highlights and we're going to dodge. So I'm going to come in here and just click. And that is definitely too much. That's at 56%. So I'm going to click on the history, go back a step, go to my layers palette. I'm going to come up to the exposure. And that was in shadows. I want highlights. All right. So we're going to put that at about nine. And now we're going to click on it. Much better result. Very subtle. Very subtle reaction. You can't even hardly see it. But I do want to bring those lighter areas. There you go. See, it's adding to the contrast of the foreground, which is a good thing. That's what I'm looking for. 
This is a sculpting process as much as anything else. You just, you know, no two people are going to process this image exactly the same, even when you tell them, please balance the dynamic range. You're going to get a whole raft of different results. Go ahead and flatten this image, and I think I'm going to experiment with some cropping because this big hole right here is throwing me off. So let's go up here and get the crop tool, and let's just experiment a little bit. And I want to change that. Okay, so now let's just come down. And just see how it looks. We're just experimenting. And there's nothing wrong with that, but you're, I think it looks better the way it was. So let's go history. Back to the beginning. So what can we do here to fix this? Um, Probably just leave it the way it is. Nope, I'm going to go to layers. Get another copy layer. And this time I'm going to hit the middle layer. I'm going to cancel the visibility of the top layer. Come up to Image, Adjustments, Curves. And I'm only adjusting for the foreground. So I'm going to add this. And I'm also going to bring... We're going to, we're going to build up the contrast. There you go. That's good. Let's go ahead and put that in. Get the top layer. We get my brush, make sure it's black, which it is, and it's at 100%. Now let's just click on it and see what happens. Yeah, this is looking real good. And I'm just, just clicking. Notice I'm not sweeping anywhere. I'm not, you know, maybe in a couple of places, but basically just clicking. And we're going to go ahead and flatten that. And I think that's, uh, that's a regulation photograph, if I had to guess, right there. Finished product. Yosemite Valley from Tunnel View of all places.